What we're going to be going over here is sales variance analysis, and we'll look at how we calculate these different variances here based on our sales. Okay, so I've got it laid out in table form here, and we'll just start by looking at what would be included here for our sales variances. So the first thing we're going to have to determine is our revenues. Based on our revenues, we're going to have some uh, sales price and volume variances. And then the next thing we have to do is determine our total variable cost. That would be our direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead. So there we're going to come up with our total variable cost. And then we can determine our uh, unit cost variances here and our sales volume variances based on those total variable costs here. Then the next thing we have to do is we have to determine our contribution margin. And that's really the difference between our revenues here and our total variable cost. Then we can determine our uh, price and cost variances here and sales volume variances based on the contribution margin. And then finally, we are going to uh, move down to our fixed overhead amounts here. And uh, this is once we know our fixed overhead amount here and our contribution margin, then we can determine our operating income here. And based on our operating income, we're going to have our sales volume variance here. Okay. So let's go back up here and let's look at how we do our calculations. So when you're dealing with variances here, and in this case we're going to be looking at our sales variances here, you really have three different amounts that you have to uh, deal with here. You're going to have to have a static or a standard amount here that you develop at the beginning of the period. And then at the end of the period, you're going to have your actual results coming in. And the, those you'd have to set, uh, determine your actual results here. And then once you have your actual results and you know you're at the end of the period here and you know your static amount or your standard budgeted amount here at the beginning of the period, then you can develop the flexible budget, as they would call it. So once you, know, once you develop this flexible budget, then you can make your comparison between your actual, your flexible, and your static amounts or budgets. Okay, so let's start with the static budget and see what would be included here. So this is the case here where to set up your static amount or your standard amount, you take your budgeted quantity here times some budgeted price here. So that's going to be your static budget here. You do that at the beginning of the period and then for your actual results here at the end of the period, uh, this is where you take your actual quantity times some actual price. So those are your actual results. Okay, so now we can determine our flexible budgeted amount. And that's simply taking the actual quantity here that you have from your actual results here, and you take that times the budgeted price. You're getting your budgeted price off the static budget. Actual results are coming off the your actual results for the period. So actual quantity times some budgeted price is going to be your flexible budgeted amount. Okay, so I've got everything laid out here in color coded here so it's a little easier to follow and just to make a point here anything that starts with an A stands for the actual quantities or um, amounts here and B uh, is for the budgeted amounts. A here is in green, B here is in blue here color coded. So the first thing you have to uh, set up here you have to know your unit sold and uh, this is the case here with the actual amount that would be the actual quantity here shown in green and then the, with the flexible budget that's taking your actual quantity here. Again, we're working off our, that would be our actual quantity here for a flexible budget. And then for the static budget, it's going to be the budgeted quantity here or shown in blue here, BQ. So for our revenues, that's just simply taking your units sold times some price here. So uh, for our actual amount, it would be the actual quantity times the actual price. And then for a flexible budget, again, we're using our actual quantity here times some budgeted price. It's budgeted price is going to come off the static budget. Actual quantity times some budgeted price on a per unit basis. Everything is shown on a per unit basis. Okay, so that's for our flexible amount here. And then for a static amount, it's simply taking the budgeted quantity times some budgeted price. And all the budgeted amounts here are shown in red here. Okay, so now knowing our revenues here, we can determine our sales price variances. So this would be the price variance. And that's really uh, looking at our actual versus our flexible amounts. So what we do here, and I'm color-coded it, so we could factor out our actual quantity here shown in gray, green here. And then really we're looking at the difference between our actual price here and our budgeted price. That's the variances are always the difference. So you, you take your actual price here 
uh, less your budgeted price or you'd be looking at the difference between the actual price and your budgeted price times the actual quantity. So we just factored out our actual quantity here. So that would be our sales price variance and you can see price variance again it's just looking at the difference between actual and budgeted prices and then you take it times the total actual quantity here. That's the actual versus our flexible budget. Now for our sales volume variance here based on our revenues portion that's simply comparing our flexible and our static amounts here. So for our flexible amount uh, what do we do? We're just going to factor out the budgeted price here because both of them share that in common. So what we would do here factoring that out, uh, our, it would be the difference here, a difference between our actual quantity and our budgeted quantity. Just factor that out here times the budgeted price. So that's a sales volume variance. You can see it, it's based on quantities here for your volume variance. Price uh, variance was difference between the actual price or the actual and the budgeted prices. So you can make that relationship here. So the next thing we have to do is determine our total variable cost. And we'll do this in a separate vi video here, but just understand what's going on here. That includes your direct materials, your direct labor, and your variable overhead. So for the actual amounts, you're just going to have your actual quantities times each of those amounts, or actual quantities for each of those amounts, direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead, times some budgeted amount on a, on a per unit basis. Again, for your direct material, be a, you'd have a, a, like ADM here for your direct material. That's on a per unit basis that you have the actual results. And then you'd have that for each your direct labor and your variable overhead. And for the flexible budget, to you understand what, again, what would go on, you'd be taking the actual quantities that you had for the period times some budgeted per unit uh, price here. And so the budgeted amount is coming off the static budget on a per unit basis. And the actual quantity is coming off our actual results. And then for our static amount, that's just taking some budgeted quantity times some budgeted unit price for each of those. So nonetheless, we've got to get down to our total variances, total variable cost, that's really direct materials, three here, direct labor, number four here, and number five here, variable overhead. So you would do that, total those up for your actual, actual your flexible, and your static amounts here. So you're gonna to have to come up with some total variable cost here. But I'm just, if we look at it in terms of a per unit basis here, so, uh, let's just look at it on per unit. So for our actual results here, it would just be the actual quantity times some actual variable cost on a per unit basis. And then for our flexible amount, again, we're using our actual quantity here times some budgeted variable cost on a per unit basis. That would be from base actual result, our actual quantities come off from our, our actual results for the period. Budgeted amounts come off our static or budgeted amounts. And I'm just showing it on a per unit basis here. So the next thing you'd have to do is for your static budget, you just be the budgeted quantity times some budgeted variable cost. Okay, so now for our unit cost variance here. That would be just taking your actual variable cost here, difference between your actual variable cost here and the budgeted variable cost. Actual variable cost from the actual uh, uh, amounts for the period, budgeted variable cost coming off your static budget. So. Uh, we're, what we're doing is just factoring out this actual quantity here from our total variable cost here. So you look at the actual quantity here, and that's looking at the uh, actual versus your flexible budget. So you factor out that AQ here, and then it's just the difference between the actual variable cost and your budget variable cost here. So that's your unit cost variance here. And for your sales volume variance, this is where you're looking at your flexible versus your static budget. Again, we're just going to factor it out here. So here's the case where you, the common, fact, uh, common amount here between your flexible and static amount is the budgeted variable cost on a per unit basis. And then the difference would be between your actual quantity here and your budgeted quantity. So actual difference between the actual quantity and your budgeted quantity times some budgeted variable cost here on a per unit basis. So that's the sales volume variance. So you see what's going on here. Uh, just looking at these variances here alone here, uh, com what was the common factor amount here between your actual and flexible bunch? It was the actual quantity here. We factored those out and just took the difference between our actual variable cost here and our budget variable cost. Again, times our actual quantity. And same for the sales volume variance. All we did is factor out the common uh, amount here. That was that variable cost. It was the same between our flexible and our standard or our static budget. Factored that amount, our 
we took it to the different we factored that out and we just taken the actual quantity less the budgeted quantity here times some budgeted variable cost so now we get down to our contribution margin here and that was our sales volume variance here that we were looking at between our flexible and our static amounts actual quantity difference between natural quantity and budgeted quantity times our budgeted variable cost so now we get down to our contribution margin and it's really the difference here between going up here our revenues here and uh, revenues number two here and our total variable cost here number six and we would do that for our actual flexible and static amount so our contribution margin that's simply taking our actual quantity times some actual contribution margin on a per unit basis just say we've determined that on a per unit basis now that would be for our actual results now contribution margin for a flexible amount here would be actual quantity times some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis well I'm not to confuse things here but when I talked about the contribution margin here between our uh, revenues here and our total variable cost we're just lumping everything together here and saying we know it on a per unit basis only to make our calculations a little easier here so we've okay so we've got our actual amount actual quantity times some actual contribution margin on a per unit basis and then for the flexible budget actual quantity times some budgeted contribution margin uh, and the budgeted contribution margin is coming off a static budget and of course the actual quantity here is coming off the actual results for the period and then for our static amount again it's just going to be a budgeted quantity times some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis here so we get down to our price cost variance here that's simply the difference between our actual and flexible amounts and we're, again we're just going to factor out that actual quantity here so we factor that out here between our so take the factor be our actual quantity uh, and our between our actual and flexible budgets and that would then the difference would just be the actual contribution margin on a per unit basis and uh, compared to the budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis okay so that difference times the actual quantity it's common factor here between actual and flexible amount is that actual quantity and then the and this is our price cost variances here so again we're talking about price cost variances that is really looking at that price uh, that the actual contribution margin versus the budgeted contribution margin okay times our actual quantity so now for our sales volume variance here based on the contribution margin that's simply looking at the difference between the flexible and static amounts so flexible amount and the difference here the common factor is the budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis between flexible and static so then the difference is really the actual quantity versus our budgeted quantity so the actual quantity minus our budgeted quantity times some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis okay so that's our sales volume variance here so you can see the volume variance is really dealing with quantities here price and cost variances are dealing with those dip price or cost for the in this case the contribution margin okay so we got down to our sales volume variance and our price cost variance here for our contribution margin so now is the next thing uh, to deal with our operating income here so this we deal with our fixed overhead and in this case it's just going to be for the actual amount there's going to be some actual fixed overhead here and then for our flexible and static amounts it's just going to be some budgeted fixed overhead both the flexible and the contribute and the static amount use the budgeted fixed overhead and then our operating income is simply the difference between our contribution margin and our fixed overhead amount here and we do that for our actual and flexible and budgeted amounts so now we can get down to our operating income here or okay our operating income again we went over that it was just the difference between our contribution margin and our fixed overhead okay so finally we get down to our sales volume variance here based on our operating income and we we'd have to go back and look at everything here and how we got to it but it's just really taking the difference here between your budgeted price versus your budgeted variable cost so you can understand the budgeted price uh, less your budgeted variable cost that difference here times the difference between your actual quantity and your budgeted quantity so that you have to determine in both cases here you'd have and and that's based on your flexible versus your static and also your 
actual amounts for the period. So that's their sales volume variance, variance based on operating income. So budgeted price, difference between budgeted price and budgeted variable cost, that difference times the actual quantity versus your budgeted quantity. Okay, so we went through all our formulas here. Just to go back, maybe the idea is here. You can see the actual budget here is just, I got everything you are showing here in green. So the actual amount here is actual quantity times some actual per unit cost or price on a per, base, per unit basis. And then the flexible amount here, that's again, taking your actual quantities here from your actual result times some budgeted quantities here on a per unit basis, budgeted price, budgeted cost, what have you, on a per unit basis. That's for your flexible amount. And then the static amount, that's just taking, setting up some budgeted quantities for the period times some budgeted unit price for each of those. Okay, so that's really what you're talking about here. And just to go back here and make up the sales price or cost variance is really the difference between your actual and flexible budget amounts here based on some price or cost amount times the actual quantity. So you can see here with the flexible budget and the actual budget here, the common factor is the actual quantity here. And then it would be the difference between price, uh, price or costs here. And then for these veil sales volume or quantity variances, it's really looking at your flexible versus your static amounts and the flexible amount and that's in uh, based on when your sales volume or your base based on some quantity here so you're taking the flexible amounts actual quantity they use here because it's based on the actual results uh, versus the static amount here the budgeted quantity here so that difference between actual quantity and budgeted quantity here times some budgeted budgeted price or budgeted unit cost. Those are your, your volume variances. Okay, so that's pretty much how you uh, go through and use uh, this chart here. And to be, it's good to go through something like this and use it for a reference when you're dealing with these different problems. Okay, one last thing here, just to go through our reference key here. So I've got everything color coded here. The actual quant AQ stands for actual units sold or actual quantity here of some units. And BQ here stands for the budget units sold or some budgeted un uh, quantity here. And then AP is the accurate, a actual average sales uh, or something, actual sales price in this case. And it should have been sales price here and budgeted a BP stands for some budgeted sales price. BP is shown in red. The AP here is sort of a dark blue and BQ is in blue and AQ here is in green. And then the other things here, uh, BVO is, AVO here is actual unit variable cost. BVO is some budgeted unit variable cost. AVC here is actual total unit variable cost. BVC here is a budgeted total unit variable cost. AFO here, is actual fixed overhead. BFO would be the budgeted fixed overhead. ACM here is actual contribution margin and BCM here would be some budgeted contribution margin. This is just a reference key here if you want to go back over that chart and look at what we're, what we're looking at here. Okay, so that'll summarize here our sales variance analysis. All right, just to summarize what we've gone through here. So with our sales variance analysis, just looking it up through the contribution margin uh, variance here. So this is really where we're looking at our actual results versus our budgeted performance here. So under our total contribution margin, it could be uh, split up between our price cost or flexible budget variances and our sales volume planning variances. Okay, so looking at our uh, price cost uh, flexible budget variance, that would simply be the actual contribution margin on a per unit basis or the difference between actual contribution margin on a per unit basis and the budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis. That difference times the actual quantity. And then under our uh, price cost variance, it can be split up between our sales price variance and our unit cost variance. So for our sales price variance, that's simply the difference between the actual price and our budgeted price. And that difference times the actual quantity. And then for our unit cost variance, it's simply taking the actual variable cost on a per unit basis and the, and the difference between that and the budgeted variable cost on a per unit basis times the actual quantity. Now just remember our unit cost various th variance that includes those uh, the variable cost here that would be the direct materials, direct labor, 
and all our and our overheads here. Okay, so that takes care of our price cost or flexible budget variance. Now moving over to our sales volume or our planning variance. That's simply taking the act difference between the actual quantity and the budgeted quantity times some, some budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis. Remember, we're looking at just the total contribution margin variance here. So uh, that for our sales volume variant, our volume or planning variance, underneath that you're gonna have the revenue part or the revenue effect and the cost part or the effect due to our costs. So for our revenue part, that's simply taking our actual quantity, difference between our actual quantity and our budgeted quantity times some budgeted price. And then for the cost part, that's simply taking the actual difference between the actual quantity and the budgeted quantity times some budgeted variable cost here on a per unit basis. So now we, from that, we can determine our sales volume variance. So you can factor out uh, what would be the common factor, actual quantity less our budgeted quantity uh, between our revenue and cost. You can factor that out here. So that you would take, so you would have that difference between actual quantity and your budgeted quantity times you could fact and then you'd be taking the factoring out your uh, budgeted price and your budgeted variable cost so difference between your budgeted price and your budgeted variable cost that difference times the difference between your actual quantity and your budgeted quantity gives you your sales volume variance so you could look at it we looked at it here just looking at our two variances here between our price and cost and our flexible budget variance those uh, amounts here and our sales volume or planning variance. Those would be a two variance analysis. And then if you move down to your four variance analysis under your price cost, you'd have your sales price variance in your unit cost variance. And then under your sales volume variance or planning variance, you'd have the uh, revenue part and your cost part. Okay, so this is just the diagram breaking down the sales variances and how they interrelate with each other.